And this one has to be one of the most like understated ones I've seen so far. Absolutely beautiful. Hello guys, welcome to the next Southern Thailand episode. And uh, say hello to our friend here to start things off. This guy's just crossing the road as I get back from dinner into the national park and prepare for an evening's activities. I'm gonna get started early again tonight, like 6.30, gonna get my stuff together and we're in for maybe not a long night, but certainly a fun night of searching and I can't wait to see what we find. I'll uh, catch up with you while I'm out. Oh, forgive me, I, I swallowed something that's made me cough, but I just found the uh, little area with a bunch of Atlas moth caterpillars. I mean, look at the size of that. Yeah, these are absolutely giant. If you don't know, the Atlas moth family, Atticus family, and, and their sort of uh, relatives are the largest moths in the world. And uh, their caterpillars, unsurprisingly, are also absolutely massive. And they do tend to gather in one area. Where is the other one? Up there. And there was another one over there and like absolutely devour trees like this. Um, so if you're kind of a botanist who's keeping a nice garden you want these guys to stay away but to me they're extremely cool all right guys first snake of the night is way up there it's just a uh, vine snake very common species i hate to look terrazans by the sh sh color of and shape of the head which i can see from beneath so just gonna leave it not gonna bother to try and get it down all right second snake and first one in hand is this uh, parius carinatus i told you they were super common down south this one was just up a tree and I used a long stick to get it down. It's puffing up its throat and this one has some nice uh, yellows on the venter as you can see. Uh, not too much more to say about this guy that I haven't said before in the previous videos. So go back and check that out if you haven't. But uh, yeah, nice cute little totally harmless Parius carinatus. Very uh, goofy and uh, some would say cute snake. Here's a very common lizard, which I don't think I've shown yet. This is Colotes emma, or like, I don't even know what it is, like forest crested lizard, I think is the common name. But uh, this one has a nice, it's a nice big, big one with a very impressive uh, crest of spines and a mosquito on it. How lovely. Here's a lizard I haven't been able to show in this Southern Thailand series so far. This is Bronchocela shenlong, the uh, green crested lizard. This is just a juvenile, so it hasn't developed its crest yet. But uh, yeah, I saw a couple of these last night, but uh, they were all out of reach and no point filming. But this one was sleeping quite low, so we get an opportunity to see this cool little guy. These are very popular with a lot of people because of their bright green coloration, and they have a generally quite a appealing shape. But yep, just going to set this guy back. Oh my god, guys. A snake at last. I just uh, spotted this pipe snake moving around the leaves near this pool. Um, just on the way back to the car, actually. I'm about to head to a different spot in the car, walk around there for a while because this has been extremely unproductive. But hey, this, the addition of this guy, that's made it three species on this walk, which equals the previous nights. Although I'd say the previous nights had a little bit more quality. Oh yeah, look at this funny little snake. Oh, yeah, of course, I completely forgot. I haven't showed this on the channel before. I actually found one, Hua Hin, but it was just on the way back from dinner with friends and I didn't have a cohesive way to fit it into any of the videos. So it got left out in the end, but yes, this is the first time seeing this species on my channel. This is quite an interesting individual. It's got, it's not exactly, it's, it's like a, an adult specimen. It's an adult specimen, but you can see it has a, Oh look, it's doing its defensive thing. It's got a, still some remnant bands on it. And you look at the venter, it's got this very kind of striking black and white venter with the stubby orange tipped tail end. But yeah, um, an interesting snake, quite common around Thailand, but not so often seen due to its secretive nature. It lives sort of semi-aquatically, semi-fossorially. It will like swim around beneath the mud in this pool, for example, but yeah. Little Jody's pipe snake, how nice. Okay, just road cruise this Malayan pit viper. Sorry, I'm talking quietly because I'm very near some locals' houses and I don't want to wake them up. But uh, this is actually only the second time I've ever seen a Malayan pit viper in this area. 
the first time being the last time we spent one night here. Which is really weird, because these are usually common where they occur, but here they are absolutely not. But this is just a beautiful specimen. I mean, look at it, so different from the ones we get in Hua Hin. And even though I didn't come down south to show you the same snakes we get in Hua Hin, I have to uh, say this is a, a fantastic individual of, of MPV, of cuddle, of Nogapa. But uh, without further ado, I'm going to set him back off the road. This is uh, nice. Oh my god, a snake! Wow guys, I it has been so long. I hiked up for, oh god, I don't know, an hour and a half maybe, then walked around for an extra half an hour at a different spot, and I at last just got our fifth species of the night. And you may be thinking, what the hell are you holding, man? That's not a snake, that's, I don't even, that's like a roll of something. I don't know, I don't have a comparison to make, but yes, what I have in my hand is a snake. If you look closely, you can make out scales. And what snake it is, so let me just get him out. Oh, oh, he's come flying out. Is the blunt-headed slug snake, Aplopeltra boa. And uh, I may have to christen myself the, the Aplopeltra god, because this species is renowned for being incredibly difficult to find due to its cryptic nature. But I spot these on almost every trip I go on. And when I say spot these, I mean I spot multiple. They're definitely not actually rare. They've just got low detectability due to their fantastic camouflage. But man, they are for sure one of the cutest snakes in Southeast Asia. I don't think that can be disputed. I mean, just look at that face. And their defensive technique is to coil up in that tight little ball that you saw. Right now, I've got my fingers here to stop him from doing that again. But trust me, if I remove my fingers, He'll be back into that ball in seconds. So, yeah, you can see why they're called the blunt-headed slug snake. It's a monotypic genus. They're the only member of it. And as the name implies, they cruise around the trees eating slugs and snails. I don't know if they eat slugs. I definitely know that they eat snails. But, yeah, I think we spent a lot of time with this guy now. And you get a good look at this really, really interesting snake that we get out here. And, uh, yeah, I'm glad I got sh could show you another new snake for the channel in this uh, tonight. So not too long after the Aplopeltra boa, the slug snake, I uh, pulled this Martaban mud snake, or that's the species I'm presuming it is. I do need to do some checks, but uh, I think it's Martaban here. Homolopsis semi zonatis is the binomial. Uh, last time I was here in the video, uh, I showed a juvenile, and this time we've got an adult. And a relatively pretty one at that. It's got a nice sort of chocolate brown color, still with the bands showing. They can be exceptionally beautiful as adults with uh, almost red coloration with strong bands, but and they can also be completely patternless. So we've got a nice sort of intermedium here. I brought him out up on the path because uh, it's a lot easier to control him and uh, he bites, as you can see here. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, not what I'd describe as a pretty snake, but certainly an interesting one. I know some people like mud snakes, uh, and these uh, Homolopsis genera certainly are unique in their own way. And this is one of the places that I can actually turn these up with regularity. They, they can be somewhat tricky to locate, honestly, but at this spot, yeah, we see them all the time. But not going to spend any more, much more time with this guy, any more time with this guy. Gonna set him back into the water after a couple picks and see if we can turn up one more snake before the end of the night because it's after midnight now and I want to be in bed by 1.30. Okay, just found a juvenile of the species which we just saw and you can see the difference. The juveniles are really dark with a much stronger banding while the uh, adults become more like tan, gray or reddish. These guys are really, really pretty. You can see on the ground here, the orange, it wasn't coming up really on my hands, but yeah, very, very nice. And uh, you can see the venture of these guys, just pale with black spots. That's typical of all members in this genus, except Nigro Taint, wait, wait, wait. Nigro ventralis, obviously, black venter with white spots on juvenile individuals of that species. One thing about these guys is they have really sharp teeth. Like even a juvenile like this just gave me a tiny nip slice me right open twice so yeah not my favorite snakes to catch but uh, I do it for you <laughs> no I'm just kidding I do it because I love catching snakes but uh, I'm not going to photograph this one as I photographed a juvenile before just gonna let him cruise off what an attractive little snake final her for the night it's a tokay gecko 
a little one kind of low down this tree you do get you do get gecko smith eye here i hear them calling all the time but they they sit high up in the trees in holes and yeah impossible to ever get a look at but these guys very bold and brave aren't they well that was a an okay day we saw 11 snakes total today i guess a few of those were in the last video but like what was it seven snakes total this evening which isn't disastrous by any means but you know with my lofty standards you know i could expect maybe one or two more and <sighs> i hope tomorrow we get some some more special species but hey we did okay it was a very fun night in the forest nothing to complain about easy going uh, i'll catch you guys tomorrow after i've had a nice long sleep good morning everyone um yes i'm driving out of the national park but uh i'm not leaving this time i'm just going to explore some areas in the vicinity and then i'm going to come back into the park and explore around here in the later afternoon we're due some rain today which is partly why i extend my stay last night wasn't fantastic but uh if we get a solid dousing of rain some cool finds could be on the cards so i'm gonna head over to these new spots and i'll uh, catch up to you when i'm there just come to check out this cave kind of isolated i've been here once before at night when i discovered it but uh never during the day it's not a very big one just gonna be interesting to have a little scout around all right guys just spotted myself a ridley's cave racer which is a uh, a very very pleasant sight it's you know not always to be expected i've been in three caves since you last saw me and uh this is the in this cave i went into some sort of hidden passageway which clearly isn't accessed much by people and this guy's just plastered on the walls you can see this one's significantly larger put my hand there significantly larger than the two we saw yesterday in the last video and uh it's lost some of the speckling but it's still kind of creamish yellow on the forebody but you can see the tail's lost the yellow and has gone to to white it's got the white stripe on it what a beautiful animal um glad we could see another one of these it still has that bluish gray head that the population around here tends to have and uh yeah i'm very very happy to see this what a cool snake Oh, if there's one thing I enjoy doing during the daytime, it's exploring the caves in Southern Thailand. Not even just Southern Thailand, anywhere in Thailand, you can find different subspecies of this incredible species. But of course, it's not what I'm really after in the caves. I'm hoping to turn up some, some gems, you know, but uh, it's always extremely fun to enter these sort of unknown, hidden away caves that you just discover. Like I already discovered a new one today, which I didn't know about. So about to head up these steps now and explore for a bit longer. All right, guys, the rain is approaching and that will probably mean I can't do much more herping for the afternoon. So I'm going to pick this back up later tonight and uh, see what we can make happen. Uh, I'm optimistic that this may change our fortunes, but you never know. Uh, yeah, OK, I'll catch you later. Hello, coming at you from my room in the National Park. I uh, started too late to run in the video outdoors. It's too dark, so uh, we're just going to have to deal with it here. But yeah, about to head out into the forest. Uh, not much more to say. We're carrying on the same place as last time. And uh, even though it didn't rain as much as I would have liked during the day, I'm optimistic that we can have a better night. So uh, fingers crossed for some more luck, something rare. And let's uh, let's go out and uh, let's kill this tonight. Let's go, come on. All right, so I decided to come up to one of these limestone cast rock faces to do some gecko hunting. Um, I got Jahira species here. I guess this is Jahira mutilata. Uh, you see it's, it's kind of adapted to the color of the wall around it which is quite cool these guys are speedy and quite alert i saw some gecko eye shine from this tree i lost the gecko but there's a pretty meaty tarantula up there a really nice one with like a white head and a dark stripy abdomen not the typical place to see tarantulas plastered to a dipterocarp tree face but cool next gecko i detected through eye shine is this wow beautifully patterned coarse gliding gecko that one is stunning it's got to be one of the most nice patterns i've seen on a cool eye often they can be quite bland i mean is this even cool eye i couldn't say for sure i think cool eye is the only species around here with but man what a nice gecko 
All right, first snake of the night. Up the stream is this sizable mangrove cat snake, and I mean very sizable. Let me put my hand next to it. Uh, you can see this guy is a solid 1.8 meters, maybe, possibly longer. Not going to disturb it though. I'll try and follow it for a bit and see if I can get a bit more on on video. Oh, he's going up here. Yeah, I'll try and get a bit more on video, but not going to overstress this snake. It's a species I've shown before on the channel up close and uh, one I'm sure we'll see many more times in the future. So just going to leave this guy be for now. Check this out, guys. That's a uh, juvenile monitor lizard in the hole in this pillar. Let me get this guy out real quick. Man, that is stupidly cute. This has to be the smallest monitor I've ever seen in my life. This is Varanus nebulosus, the clouded monitor, which is the kind of common forest and forest edge dwelling species here. There's a few rare species of monitor, but this is definitely nebulosus and doesn't affect how happy I am to see this because I, I can't remember the last time I caught one of these. Um, in fact, the last time I caught one of these was actually here in almost the same way, except that one was significantly larger. This one is really, really dinky. Isn't that cute? It's crazy to think this is the same species we saw. Go back to the last video and you can see one running up a tree and you can see how huge they get. Whereas this guy, he's tiny. He's so small and cute. There you go. Now you can have a proper look at him. Look at this guy. He's got sharp claws though, I'll tell you that much. Even one this size has sharp claws. The big ones, if you catch them, man, you're in for a, a shredding, to say the least. <coughs> anyway, I feel like I've harassed this guy for way too long now. I'm going to take a couple quick photos and put him back. I've seen a few of these uh, Certidactylus lecoguli already tonight. This is the first one that's in a in situ, which is nice to look at. Not the prettiest one I've ever seen, but uh, you know these are a very attractive species and of course very common in this little area. All right, guys, the uh, National Park HQ was absolutely disastrous. So I've hopped in the car and I'm going to another spot, which was absolutely disastrous last night. So uh, pray for me, guys, please. Okay, maybe tonight isn't going to be as disastrous as I thought. There is a glimmer of hope. I just found this lovely little Lycodon subsinctus, Malayan banded wolf snake. He's heading off. All right, got him to sit still again. Yeah, there's a reason I'm not holding this guy like some of the other Lycodon. It's because these guys bite a lot and they have really sharp teeth. But uh, you know me, I'm a big fan of the Lycodon genus. Can't, can't even say how many times I've said this on this channel at this point. And this species, despite being one of the, the, one of the more common ones, is uh, definitely very nice. They've got a cool head shape, uh, nice eyes. And this one's still fairly young. I mean, it's adult size, but it hasn't got too big yet. So it's still retained the, the white bands. When these are little, they have very strong white banding, but as they grow, they lose it and eventually become basically a uniform black snake, usually retaining a uh, faint or prominent white collar. This one's got a very prominent white collar, collar which makes it an enjoyable snake to look at. Uh, I know this probably probably looks similar to the uh, dusky slender wolf snake from a couple videos back, but no, it's a different species. It doesn't have the strongly keeled scales and it's a lot more slender. And even though it is slender and the species can climb well, it's primarily terrestrial. It's very rare that you see this species climbing. Usually they're just cruising around the ground on the edges of roads or near streams, but yep. Yeah. Okay, gonna keep moving because I want to find more snakes tonight. Let's go. Okay guys, check this out. Another blunt-headed slug snake. I couldn't tell exactly what it is until I got up here. I, I thought it might have been a Boiga, but it's just a really intricately patterned Aplopeltera. Okay, here's a better look. This one's got some, it's a really nice patterning and it's a little bit more thick than the uh, typical ones we're seeing. I'm not sure if there's a discrepancy between adult, I mean, uh, female and males. Um, I was always, I was wondering whether, oh, I was wondering whether males may be more slender than females, but look at the patterning on this one. These are so variable. I swear every individual that I see has a different pattern. And this one has to be one of the most like understated 
ones I've seen so far, absolutely beautiful. This one's doing this sort of dual coil mechanism. These guys are so goofy, man. They really do win the goofball, stupid looking snake award of the year, but they are super cute. So yeah, that's nice. I'm gonna keep searching because uh, it's been a tough night so far, uh, but I reckon we can, we can end with a good species count if we just keep persevering. Look at this thing, man. I mean, <laughs> that, is, that is quite something. Could I roll it, you think? Alright, I'm gonna put him back. Oh man, since I've come up to this waterfall, finally some sense of normalcy has been resumed. Like, usually I'm finding these on a regular basis, but even vine snakes have been so hard to come by. This one here is the Malayan vine snake, a Hachilla micterizans. We saw one of these high in the tree last night, but uh, yeah, this is a southern lowland forest dwelling species, which is a uh, does range a bit higher up the peninsula than you think, but uh, it's, it's a lot more uncommon there while well, down here. They're pretty abundant in lowland forest. Not as common as a Hatilla prasina, but uh, we see a lot of these. But man, even one of these is welcome after a, a night like, like last night and tonight where it was like one to two hours between each snake. And now I found two in the space of just 10 minutes or, or less, maybe. Let's hope we can keep that trend up. I'm gonna let this guy go now. All right, guys, look at this adult. Sorry, I've got to keep him in his place. Buiga benculoensis. Now, if you'll remember in one of my recent videos, I showed one which was in the intergrade phase between juvenile and adult, but this one here is a true adult. This one is huge. It's almost two meters long. I'd say 1.7. It's uh, deceptive because of how slender it is, but these are actually very, very sizable snakes. And as I was saying, now you can see the true adult morph. It's this nice, jungle green coloration with the pink like very faint pale pink bands which is a nice color combination they have the uh, pale vertebral stripe as well and just generally they have a cool head shape too like the adults of this species juveniles are kind of underwhelming the integrade was nice i guess but adults really develop that nice squarish head and uh, their pattern is obviously very very cool the pinks, you know, any snake with pinks on it is pretty interesting in my opinion. And the combination between green and pink is certainly a color, co color combo, which works. Let's get this guy in hand, shall we? Ooh. Okay, here's a, I got it just calm down so I can show you it in hand. These guys are usually very wriggly, very uncooperative, and you don't get much of an opportunity to see them in hand. But yeah, a much better color contrast against my hand than uh, on the floor. I mean, look how long this is. It's tails all the way down there on my arm, I mean. A solid 1.7, 1.8 meter snake, and yeah, a great addition to the night's finds. A lovely snake to see, a proper southern jungle specialist. I'm going to set him back. No need for photos of this one. I've seen adults of these a few times in the past. Look at this Acanthosaurus sleeping on the on the electricity wires. Not the typical place you see lizards sleeping, so I thought I'd show this. Quite cool. Dude, this is getting ridiculous now. The third blunt-headed slug snake of this trip. And, and I mean, look how small it is. And I spotted this from all the way down there on the road. Like, this is the truest testament to the fact that uh, it's not my eyesight, which is the reason I haven't been seeing many snakes this trip. Definitely the conditions, because I've seen so many snakes which were like dense in vegetation, hidden away, high up in trees, camouflage to the maximum. But yeah, I'm not gonna take, even disturb this one, because we've already seen two on this trip and one on this video, so peace. This nice little uh, Certidactylus peguensis is making up the numbers for tonight. This one's got a particularly striking dorsal patterning and almost a full tail, so I thought I'd show them. I saw many of these tonight, but uh, this one particularly pretty. Second uh, Aetila micterizans of the night. It's already moving, although I'm not going to disturb it. Oh wow, look how much it overexposes. <laughs> and I've got my light on like the dimmest setting. Let me uh, play with the iPhone. All right, that should be a bit better. Well guys, after the Ahatila, I'd say I went maybe almost two hours about seeing a snake. I walked around there for another hour, drove around for a little bit, and just came back to uh, my accommodation. Decided to have one more look around before bed and just rustled up this uh, lovely 
white spotted cat snake. And here you can tell the uh, stark difference between this and its congener Boiga benculoensis. You see different head shape, completely different patterning. They both have like the pale spots ventrolaterally, but other than that, they're pretty distinct. And uh, I, I'm confused as to why anyone ever thought these were the same species. And some people still do, strangely, but uh, fortunately these are a lot less wriggly than uh, Benculoensis and you can often get a good look at them in your hand. What the hell's going on? I keep accidentally zooming in by accident. I'm very tired, but uh, yeah, this is a great addition to the night's finds. And uh, finally we got a night of actually turning stuff up on a semi-consistent basis. This was only the second long gap of the night between species. This uh, lovely guy may be the very last snake we see in this video. There's a very high chance I won't turn anything else up tonight. So uh, congrats to you and thank you very much if you watched the whole Southern Thailand series and made it this far in the video. If you didn't, um, go back and check out the other videos. They're full of fun stuff too. But yeah, I'm gonna let this guy go now. All right guys, just stuck in traffic right now. So uh, on the way back to Hua Hin, but I thought I'd give you a little bit of a, a recap and sort of a reflection on the trip that just went by. And uh, of course, a massive thank you to everyone who watched this series. It was, it was really fun. But I'm sure a lot of people are wondering, like, how do you do a trip like this alone, walking in the forest alone at night? And I mean, when I'm in these forests and these national parks, it's not like there's other people walking around and guides. I'm totally alone all night, not a soul around anywhere near. And obviously you might think it's creepy and you'd be right sometimes it is a little creepy but that's part of what makes it fun i'll tell you i don't know how to word this quite the way it feels necessarily but there's something about being in the forest by yourself which allows you to connect to like your instincts in a way that nothing else does like being totally alone hunting something in the forest i feel like you connect to some primal part of your brain and it's very exhilarating you know, that alertness to every noise, all your senses are on, on maximum sharpness. It's just a cool feeling. And not to mention, I just love being alone sometimes. I haven't spent a single day alone since I moved to Thailand in January. I'm either surrounded with Cass, my friends, it's, yeah. And, and I just wanted to take some time to just not be dependent or worry about anyone else, just be completely alone and enjoy it. And I really did enjoy it. Even if we didn't have the most productive time, God damn, it was fun. And yeah, I have to say that it was a great time and I hope to do some more stuff like this soon. But we'll probably be back to Hua Hin videos now for at least a couple of weeks. So I hope you enjoy that and I'll catch you in next week's video, guys. Peace.